Hey everyone, and welcome on our value session for worship. So I attended a rugby game uh, quite a while ago uh, between the Blue Bulls and the Lions. And in this game, I got exposed to some really, really diehard fans. So now, you know there are Blue Bull fans, right? And then there are Blue Bull fans. <laughs> Fanatics, crazy people. Uh, not, not like that. But uh, they had these amazing, extravagant celebrations every time uh, someone scored a try. Or whenever there was a call that went against the Bulls, they had these extravagant protests against the referee uh, to change the call, which he was not going to change, of course. But... I just remember it was pretty crazy to me and also I felt slightly uncomfortable <laughs> sitting around these people but all in all it was a good game I enjoyed it a lot but I remember thinking about <clears throat> this 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 situation later on and and I and I felt to myself like you know when I start worshiping God extravagantly in a church setting it really doesn't bother me a lot of times that there might be some folks that get uncomfortable by it because this worship that I'm giving to God is important enough for me uh, to express to Him uh, that it doesn't matter uh, what others think. Uh, and so I, I learned uh, out of this situation that there's a couple of things about worship that we can see, even with these diehard Blue Bull fans worshiping the Bulls almost to an extent. They were that it's Worship is a response to something or someone that we want to express value to. And we are all made to express worship in an extravagant way and who we want to do that to is up to us that depends on us and we all want to worship in a way where it doesn't matter what others think to us when we worship it really doesn't matter to us what others think about us when we truly worship psalm 100 verse 1 to 5 says this make a joyful noise to the lord all the earth serve the lord with gladness come into his presence with singing Know that the Lord, He is God. <laughs> it is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. Now, I do not believe that God will call us to do something that is not part of the way that he made us to be. And I think this passage, it's addressing the people of Israel, but it's an example for us in how to worship God. Just pay attention to these expressive words, this expressive language being used here. Make a joyful noise. Serve him. Come into his presence with singing. Enter with thanksgiving, with praise. Give thanks. Bless him. And look at the reasons. He is God. He made us. We are His. He is good. <laughs> His love endures forever. His faithfulness goes to all generations. See how the value of God here uh, translates into this expressive worship. Now we value worship at Every Nation Faith City because it is about ascribing to God worth and value through what we do. He is at the center of everything we do. So he is the center of our obedience, the center of our music, the center of our words, uh, our expressions of worship. He's the center of our messages. He's the center of our services. We want him to receive all of our adoration and all of the value we can give to him through our lives and service. That is why when we gather together, we make loud music with drums and strings and lyrics that sings His praise and expresses our adoration of Him. That is why we raise our hands to show our surrender <laughs> and to praise Him. That is why sometimes we shout His name loudly uh, because He makes us more excited than when someone scores a try on a rugby field when we watch a game. That is why we sit together also to hear the Word of God so that we can go and apply it and be obedient to Him. So I want to give us four things about worship that makes it a value for us. First thing, worship helps us to focus on God's character and attributes. Psalm 95 verse 2 to 3 says this, Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. 
When we read this, we see that the writer is calling us to worship, but he also makes us aware of why we do that. It shifts us to his character and his attributes. Number two, worship unites us as the body of Christ. Paul says to the Ephesians in Ephesians 5, verse 19 to 20, Address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. Also to the Colossians, he says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. It helps us to join together in expressing our love for God. Number three, worship prepares our hearts to receive God's word. Throughout the time of worship, through singing and preaching, we are stirred by God's word to respond in obedience to him. The next verse from Colossians 3 verse 16 says this, Whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And number four, worship is a form of spiritual warfare. As we worship God, we declare our allegiance to him and reject the lies and temptations of the enemy. This strengthens our faith as a congregation and helps us to resist the attacks of the evil one. We're fighting a spiritual war together as a congregation in worship. I have a couple of questions for us after this session uh, to ponder on and to think about. The first one is this. What did you learn or what stood out to you from the session the most? The second one is, how can you apply what you have learned in this session. And the last one, with who can you go and share what you have learned during this session?